Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is part one of the farm truck build. Now I've got a few things planned for this truck. The first thing being is that we're going to put a big old power stroke in there, get rid of that Duramax, and actually put some power under the hood. That's a joke. If anybody knew, we'd be putting a Cummins under there anyways. Not no power stroke. So like I said, this is part one. It's going to be a part series. Today all I'm doing is just power washing the truck, getting it cleaned up before I bring it back into the shop here. The few things that I do have planned for this truck is that I want to build a tool skid for this truck um, and obviously outfit it with tools uh, and a fuel barrel, a generator, an air compressor. That way I have all the tools that I need, supposedly, when I head out to do farm work uh, in case of a breakdown, a flat tire, or anything like that that I might be able to fix. Other things that I want to do is I want to try and get tires put onto this thing. Uh, I've had really good luck with these Hankook all-terrain tires. Actually fantastic luck with them. They're actually on my daily driver pickup right there. But with it being a dually and getting into situations where it's a little bit muddy, I'm wondering if I should put more aggressive tires on there. Uh, let me know what you guys think of that or if I should stay with these Hankooks that have actually worked very, very well on daily driver pickups. But I'm thinking little more grip for muddy situations might be a good thing. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? Then the next thing that I'm going to try and work on is I'm going to upgrade the light package. It already has back facing lights which I really like but maybe I can figure out a way to wire in some lights that, that way if I'm in the field or something like that I can kick them on and I shine out kind of like a tractor does to the sides and everything else so that I get really good visibility when I'm in the field or towing something around. The other thing that needs done desperately is this bed here needs some TLC. Uh, probably just needs a repaint. I don't know if I can put like a bed liner on the top of it or not. I don't know if anybody's done that. I'm going to do the research online. If you guys have done that where you've put a bed liner on a flat bed and it worked good, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to wire brush this up and give it a new coat of paint. That way it doesn't go to rusting away on me. So the footage you guys are about to see is actually from the other day. It was actually my birthday and Andrew and I headed down to Kirksville, Missouri to the Harbor Freight to pick up some tools, kind of give myself a birthday treat. Plus I need the tools for this truck. That way I'm not just taking tools out of the shop and then they get lost, yada, yada, yada. And on the way down there, we stopped at the White Oak Grill in X-Line, Iowa to have lunch with one of my super fans, Denver. And I had the burger and Andrew had a tenderloin and that tenderloin looked super good as well until he decided to smear a bunch of mustard all over it and it, I guess it just didn't need the mustard. But it was a great time talking with you Denver. We'll definitely be back there to eat lunch again. Uh, like I said, awesome place to eat lunch. Check out the White Oak Grill there in X-Line, Iowa. And if you really want to have a tasty dessert, get the Texas Cobbler warmed up just a little bit with two scoops of ice cream. So after filling our stomachs, we headed down to Kirksville, Missouri, I mean Missouri, to the Harbor Freight. I ended up spending about two hours there at the store trying to pick out what tools that I might want to put into the toolbox and actually even which toolbox I wanted to go with. So afterwards, after we get done in Harbor Freight and the Harbor Freight footage, we'll meet up right back here after I get done power washing this here dirty girl and we'll go through what tools I went with, what toolbox I went with, and maybe which tools you guys would like to see in a farm truck or which tools you guys would have in the farm truck and maybe what toolbox you would have gone with. You guys can give me your opinion. Let's get to washing. Let's get you guys to Kirksville. Finding anything you need, Andrew? Everybody needs a persuader. Well, that's a that's awkwardly heavy. Too heavy for its own good. That's better. We're finding tons of things we can live without. Now let's go over what I got. Now this in total was about $500 worth of tools. 
which is a good chunk of money. Um, I already have some of these tools here anyways, but it's also quite a bit of tools for $500. Now granted, these are not the highest quality of tools, but I've also probably stated earlier in the video, I'm more likely to lose the tools than I am to break the tools. So kind of knowing yourself, I'm not going to go out there and buy snap-on tools and stuff like that. It's just not going to happen. Things will end up in tractors, get lost, I'll be replacing tools. But this is what I think I need. I've probably forgotten something. If I have, let me know. But let's go through what I've got. So here's what I ended up with. It's a pretty good selection and we'll start in on this side of the bed. Uh, I got a dead blow hammer. I don't really think I needed a dead blow hammer in the toolbox. I may, but I don't have a dead blow hammer, so I, I bought a dead blow hammer. So then moving on, I've got a cheap set of wrenches here. They go from, I believe, a quarter to an inch and an eighth, so I will most likely have to track down myself some bigger sizes because we do use bigger sizes than these, but it wasn't really an option to buy those. And then I've also got the same thing here in metric. So those will be just for like when you're trying to hold the back of a nut and using the impact. Those are just kind of the way that those go. Um, for more of the what we're actually going to want to use these ratcheting wrenches, I'll probably have to again find more of those like uh, 15 16 and I haven't even seen a 15 16 in a while um, of a ratcheting style one. Maybe get some bigger sizes of those because all I've got is uh, 5 16 to a 3 quarter for those. And this one here is the one that really kind of sucks is that they only went to a 17 when we do go quite a bit bigger than 17 quite often. So I will most likely be tracking down more ratcheting wrenches. Uh, I went with some quarter and 3 eighths and half inch drives for an impact that I have. Uh, that will be end up in the toolbox as well. Uh, went with a cheap set of pliers, needle nose snips, more wiring style pliers and vice grip or channel locks those really probably aren't worth a darn but we went with one of those just because of course you got to have screwdrivers here because this thing right there is everybody knows what you use the most and it rarely ever actually gets used for a screw it's more of like a prod on absolutely everything went with what you guys already saw a couple of pry bars they seem kind of chintzy but they are the ones that you can whack so I went with a couple of those and I think that was like three dollars so even if they break uh, I'm really not hurting too bad got myself a magnetic light I've always kind of hurting to find those every now and then a set of allen wrenches not very often do we actually use allen wrenches unless you're trying to use like a set screw or something like that but I got a metric and SAE a lot of these are duplicates because Unfortunately, on a lot of equipment, it's either metric or SAE, and we have a mix of both, so you really have to have double the equipment. Went with a battery brush cleaner because you always have to have one of them around. Nut drivers, those probably are not the most important thing to have in your toolbox, but they would be handy every now and then. For sockets, I got these color-coded sockets, which were pretty chintzy-looking color-coded sockets, but at least I'll know where they come from. Um, I got short uh, 3 8 or sorry, short quarter drive sockets because usually when you're using a quarter drive, which I also got a quarter drive, you're in kind of tight spots, so I really don't feel like I needed the long ratchet or long socket for those. For the 3 8 I've also got short sockets and then I also got longer sockets. I did not get the longer sockets for the half inch driver because I'm not picky and I'll use impacts, which I obviously got. Uh, metric and SAE impacts as well, uh, which I will just throw onto the quarter inch drive or the half inch drive. I've also got this. This I did not buy. I'll be using an impact, and I also got a smaller impact that I can use. And then also, I did not buy this, but this will be in the toolbox as well uh, the voltmeter or a multimeter. So, this was the first time, which I'm missing one of them. Where the heck did that go already? Did you believe that? Shoot got one missing already hopefully it was on there when I bought it I'm pretty sure it was Bought my first set of swivel sockets I've never had swivel sockets before I'm kind of interested to see how those things go uh, a lot of people say that they're good so we're gonna try some of those out uh, went with a uh, went with uh, there's Andrew went with uh, Wow Andrew you could have came and power washed the rest of this driveway off I know how you like doing that Anyways, got a set of chisels, and those will probably just go in in the box in case you need them. 
chintzy pair of vice grips uh, those probably aren't worth a darn either but we'll just have to see so other than that rounding out the tools that I got I obviously got myself a few new ratchets I was looking at those icon ratchets because those are a 90 tooth but they were also about one of these was in an icon form was the same price as all these and I'm farming on a budget here so that's what I went with we'll see if that's actually what it takes and maybe there might be some other things like I said let me know now let's go check out the toolboxes that I went with so the toolbox that I ended up going with was a Montezuma 30 by 15 inch triangle toolbox I did try and talk myself out of this toolbox a few times because if anybody knows these Montezumas they are pretty darn pricey I mean the toolbox that I was looking at down at Harbor Freight it was about $200 um, and it was a little bit bigger toolbox than this but the issue was is that after we think about it is that I wasn't 100% sure how weatherproof the toolbox was down there at Harbor Freight it was about 200 bucks my initial thought is is like heck I can buy a lot of tools with $300 well that was just a drawer toolbox and then so I had to buy the organizers to see if they'd even remotely stay organized and every organizer that I was needing was 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. And before you knew it, that I was already at pretty close to within 100 bucks of this toolbox here. And I did not know if it would stay organized, um, as in when you're bouncing through the fields. Plus, I wasn't 100% sure that it was weatherproof. So I ended up going with the Montezuma toolbox, which is a good deal because it's actually really what I wanted. So I kind of got myself what I wanted, and we'll call it a birthday present. Then the other thing, sorry if the lights are flashing, this will be quick, that I got is I bought another under the bed toolbox. The new one that I got is just like this one here. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger because the filler neck is on this side so that restricts how far forward we can go there. This side I'm keeping the chains and all those oddities that I have to use to put straps down. But I can put the bigger box on this side and if I can maybe I'll mount like air hose reel in there and then be able to keep things that I might need like coolant or engine oil and things like that might be able to stay on this side and it's a 30 inch box so it's a little bit bigger. And to give you guys an idea kind of how this will mount up in the end, the toolbox will end up being here kind of like this on one of these sides. Um, and then I'm going to build the skid that way and we'll be talking about that in another video. But that just kind of gives you guys an idea is that I'm going to be in front of this hole here. Um, that way I can put the rails back on in some way and then also the fifth wheel will still be able to be used. And the hope is, is that the skid will be able to be removed with like a forklift. That way I can use the whole bed of the truck and set this off in the shop during the winter months and stuff, which when I'm not supposed to be working, which it is also January 6th, which I should not be able to be outside in a sweatshirt, power washing and doing dirt work. So that's the, what's coming up here in the future, guys. Stick around for part number two. Let's send you back to uh, my birthday and we'll end out the video. So I think that might wrap up the video here for the day. We've got all the parts that I think we need to start in on this project and that'll end part one of the what should we call this the super awesome farm truck build <laughs> super maybe duper we, awesome maybe farm we truck should build? wait to call it super duper awesome until it's done the possibly super duper awesome there farm truck go. build <laughs> so that's safer anyways thanks for hanging out with us again today um andrew you got any words of wisdom just my usual thanks for watching we'll catch you next time and like I said, if you uh, are ever down around X Line, stop in and uh, check that restaurant out. The super White good Oak, eating. yeah, super duper good eating, and the White Oak Grill. Tell Denver we sent you. Four is uh, thirty-three point four gallons, and we did four forty divided by thirty-three point. 13.17 gallons to the, to the acre. Gosh, is that a farmer's <laughs> statement right there? Oh, I did 13.17 gallons to the acre. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fuel per acre. <laughs> wow. So, that's not too bad because I've been hauling around things with this on this load too. 
So I've hauled, I don't know, I've, I've been hauling stuff around. So You hauled some hay with it and you hauled the skid yep, loader. And yep, we did. So we did pretty decent on that. I'd that's, say that's half a good good average. Yeah, that's, you know, anything above 12 is pretty good. Oh, yeah, and Brian, don't worry. No government juice. We burn zero government juice per acre. <laughs> and Andrew was also not oh, oh. driving. So there's no hey. heavy footed stuff. Oh, going on. oh come on. I'm only as light time as a feather. Only time I get heavy footed is when he gets it stuck and I drive it out. And y'all miss that. 